to be careful is not only to take care of yourself, but also to guard yourself from the carelessness of others. Toba Beta. Ian and Brody Campbell sat at the kitchen table. They had been married for 23 years, had children in college, and in their 46 years each was fit and handsome in appearance. They had to look forward to the next chapter of freedom and a few coins in their pockets for new adventures. On the desk next to Ian's right elbow was a large envelope. Brody, I'm your man, right? Of course, Ian, since 11th grade and will always be my one and only. No temptation to fool around now that the kids are gone? You look beautiful. I can see the other guys looking at you. Don't be ridiculous, Yan. With you, I have everything I want and more. Why are you asking such a question? You haven't found another, have you? Ha, no way. I'm a one lover, and you've always been my one and only. Well then, Stallion, why don't we leave it at that? Take me upstairs and show me how much you appreciate your woman. Perhaps, my love, but first scroll back through your call history. If so, have you done so in the last week? Only if I'm looking for a number I can't remember. In other cases, not likely. Why do you ask? Could you take your phone and go back to last Sunday around four o'clock in the afternoon? As I recall, you left at three to run some errands and said you'd be home by six. Brody fidgeted in her chair, surprise and fear flashing across her face. Why is this such a big deal, lover? I don't remember calling or texting you or anyone else during that time. Come on, baby, take me upstairs and give me what I want. Indulge me for a minute, honey. Look at your phone. Okay, but you're not setting yourself up for a passionate night. It's more like dousing a hot fire with water to douse the flames. Brody flipped through the call history and suddenly gasped. Oh, no, she said in a barely audible whisper. I believe you see my call, which lasted 28 minutes and 14 seconds. As it turned out, it was the longest 28 minutes of my life. I don't know if you're familiar with the term dialing ass, dear, but that's exactly what you did when you slept with your boss. At first, I was so caught off guard that I just sat there listening. Frozen. After a moment, it dawned on me that recording you both would probably be a good idea. Brody's eyes widened with fear, and she began to realize that her smug little world might come crashing down. Please, no, Ian, let me explain. Shh, honey, let's just listen for a few minutes. I think you can handle it since I've endured this whole episode. Placing the phone on the table, he pressed the play button. There was a muffled, gurgling, sucking sound for a moment, and then voices came on. Take me, Brody. That's it. Keep going. I love that big monster, Keith. Squelch, 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 your body rocks my world, lover. Oh yeah, slut, keep going, yeah, like this. A sound like a squeak. Yes, stud. There were tears in Brody's eyes as the recording continued. For the next couple minutes, everything was the same, but then the rhythm changed. It was soon followed by the distinct sounds of undressing. <laughs> How much time do you have, Brody? I want to have you all day. When did you tell your little asshole you were coming home? Don't worry, kid, I won't be back until six, and he trusts me completely. He has no idea how good his loving wife is getting from her swaggering stud boss. I love having sex in your car. It's so dirty and raunchy, just like me. Come on, big boy, I need you. I can't believe he's so naive. We've been doing this for three years, and he still doesn't get it. I know how to keep him in his place, lover. He'll never know. The cheaters hissed correcting their positions. Tell me how much you want it, baby. Come on, Keith, I need it so bad you've got me so turned on. Ian decided that was enough and shut it off. Well, my dear, it looks like we won't be going upstairs tonight or ever again. Brody sobbed, trying to find the words, but they weren't coming. Come on, Brody, don't worry. Like you said, it's Keith's girlfriend, not mine. Obviously, you want him to be your lover, not me. No need to cry. Brody began to catch her breath, looking at her husband. No, Ian, I love you. I just said it at the time. It means nothing to me. Just a wild affair, that's all. Well, my wife, I don't think three years of outright betrayal can be considered an affair. As for love, I know you like what I provide, and I know you love your children. I know you love the country club, the gold American Express card I pay for, and the beautiful red Lexus RX 350 I gave you for our last anniversary. Now I know why you love a job you don't want, 
but please stop insulting my intelligence and be truthful. There is no room in your heart for love for me, not the kind of love shared by one man and one woman for a lifetime. I love you, Ian, but it was an idiotic choice on my part. The kids were getting older and I felt lost. Keith just jumped in when I was weak. I'll break up with him tonight, I swear. I won't, Brody, and seriously, cut the crap. Your carelessness is the only reason we're having this conversation. Careless with the phone, but infinitely more careless with my love and our marriage. I was gullible. Obviously too gullible, but no more. Now I will only proceed with extreme caution when it comes to you. Finishing his comments, he placed the envelope on the table. What's this? asked Brody, recoiling as if from a poisonous snake. It's my first step toward caution. Self-preservation and caution tell me I should get as far away from you as possible. These are divorce papers. I thought about filing them at work, but you shouldn't think me soft-hearted. I figured I'd show more dignity than you've shown me in the last three years and hand them to you in the privacy of my home. No, Ian, please, no, exclaimed Brody. She was about to continue, but he interrupted her. Yes, Brody, emphatically yes. I will never be a willful sycophant or allow myself such disrespect. I don't believe for the world that you could have thought things could turn out differently. Maybe Keith was your first. Maybe he was one of dozens over the years. I don't know. And, not to be unsubstantiated, I don't care. He was the only one, Ian. You have to believe that. Before him, there was only you. Brody, listen to me carefully. I have no reason to believe a cheat and liar like you, but like I said, I don't care. My life will not be dictated and controlled by a selfish whore who spits on my love and my trust. Get a lawyer and hope for the best, but it's over between us. Brody's anguish began to turn to anger. I'm not going to walk away and sign those pathetic papers, Ian. I will fight this to the last man. I will not become a divorced woman after 23 years of a beautiful marriage. This is my home. You are my husband, and I will fight for my life, for our life together. Do as you see fit, Brody, but let me caution you. First, your parents and our children know what happened, so you're going to be busy trying to explain yourself to them. I've spoken to all of them today. Secondly, the house was mine before we were married. It was inherited from my grandfather and belongs to me alone. You have no rights to my premarital property. Third, Keith's wife Carol is probably having a similar conversation with her loving husband right now, since I gave her a copy of this tape. Perhaps you two can live together. And finally, you've probably forgotten about the prenuptial agreement we both signed all those years ago. I've updated it all these years, out of caution, of course. There are no loopholes in it. Cheating means the unfaithful partner gets nothing. Nothing. Zero, 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 zero. I've enclosed a copy for your attorney's review. I have booked and paid for one week at the Hilton Garden Hotel near your office. For one week, you may use the car I have provided for you. After that, you will have to pick up the payments if you want to keep it, as it is registered in my name. I will pay the penalty and give up the lease. Now I suggest you go pack. Brody was at a loss for words, shocked at how in an instant her rogue chickens had come home. Ian stayed at the table while his soon-to-be ex-wife went upstairs. Thirty minutes later, she came downstairs with two large suitcases. Brody, you can call and set up a time to come back and pick up other things you think you'll need. We don't have anything in common that I'm going to leave behind. I'll make sure I won't be home when you get here. Is that all, Ian? Nothing more to say in 23 years? Well, Brody, if you do find some sucker who wants to get you, next time you be less careless and more careful.